projected as uh, arguably the brightest sports star in this town right now. But you also have a unique existence within this franchise because you have two of your best friends that work with you yeah. a as well. How enjoyable is it to have Darrell and Quentin alongside with you? Uh, it's been one of the best things about this year, you know, for me, is to be able to, you know, through the ups and through the downs, whether it's on the court or off the court, I have those two guys to go to, vice versa. Q has been a, uh, a good friend of mine since I was in, you know, high school, and it, our relationship has gotten bigger and bigger and better every year. And D. Wright is someone that came in and, you know, I kind of took under my wing early and brought him to, into the family, and now all of us are connected. And, of course, Devin Wright is a huge connection. Uh, for all of us because, you know, that's me and Q's godson. But, you know, these are guys that I'm having a relationship with for the rest of my life. When I'm old, when we all done playing a game of basketball, we all can sit somewhere, hopefully somewhere warm, and just talk about the moments in, that we've shared in life. We've talked about a couple times in our conversation of young players that you've taken on your wing, like Darrell and Bees. Who was the guy that did that for you? Well, you know, when I came in, you know, the first person was um, Karan Butler. Karan kind of, you know, took me out to eat sat me down across the table and told me about the NBA. Told me what to expect, what not to expect. Told me to smile all the time. So he was the first person when I got in the league that I felt like I got a big brother, you know, by my side. And then as the year went on, Lamar Odom became, you know, that person that I sat in back of on a plane and just had so many conversations with him and him really schooling me on the whole thing and just bringing me along, making me feel comfortable and confident with my role on the team. And as you see, as the year went on, I started playing better because I started feeling more comfortable. Wade, puts it up. It's yes. good. Because of that year, because of those guys, is the reason I'm having success I'm having because they made me feel not only welcome, but wanted. Wade's feelings from his rookie season have shaped his philosophy on leadership. He is a team captain who can push and pull his teammates towards success through both action and words. Case in point, the Heat's highest draft pick in team history, Michael Beasley. Michael is a great kid. He's a great kid, and I understand the position he's put in. He has so much talent, and it's a lot thrown at him, a lot coming at him, and he don't want to step on one toes. But it comes a time where you got to say, listen, we need you. I need you. You know, your ability is we count on your ability. That moment, I felt like I needed to show him how much I needed him. And, I mean, he went on to have one of his best second half of the year. Beasley! Oh, my! What a play! Arroyo to the rim. Miss tipped up though by Beasley. Here comes Wade, sagging through. Beasley for three. Yes! Yeah, baby! The Michael Beasley show. I think sometimes it feels good for Michael to know, you know what? D feels like he needs me to be successful. I do, you know, we do. We need Michael to be the player that we drafted him to be, and that's the number two pick in the draft and one of the best players in the world. In March of 2010, you turned on that other gear that you have uh, as you've done from Marquette all the way through your entire career in the NBA. Uh, you've won Player of the Week in March at a 3-0 week to start the month. What is it about the remaining time that you want to know about yourself, that you want to know from your teammates and coaching staff, that this is a playoff push that's going to mean something as you get to the second season? You never want to leave anything, you know, out there. You know, of course, the NBA is a long season. Um, but it comes a time with certain times you're like, you know what, okay, we got to give it all. And I've made the statement to my teammates when we was coming out the all-star break, and I said, listen, you know, whatever happened in the beginning of the season is over. Let's move on with these 20-so-odd games, and let's try to be as good as a team that we're going to be. I'm trying to do what, what everyone expects me to do, but I'm trying to do what I expect myself to do, and that's to go out and lead this team, you know, to be playing better as we go into the stretch of the season. And finally, Dwayne, uh, above our heads, sometime down the road, a number three will hang in the Raptors. When someone comes in this building 25 years from now and sits down with their kid and says, well, there's number 33, and there's number 10, and there's number 3, when they start talking about you, what do you want that father to say to the son or daughter about the type of player that you were? You know what? That moment happens. You know, I want them to say, you know what? I came and watched that guy play. He gave it his all every night, whether he had it or not. You know, he played the game like it was his first time playing the game every time that he loved the game, and he didn't leave anything to chance. Dwayne Wade has a prolific resume of accolades, but what he is most proud of is his significant work in the community. I thoroughly enjoyed my time sitting down with Dwayne to discuss these finer moments of life.
Through Dwayne's personality, character, leadership, and work ethic, he has developed a very successful path for himself as well as others. We look forward to watching much more success for Dwayne Wade in the years to come. Thank you so very much for watching this special edition of Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. Each year.